Juju, hey, it was good. Do do. What's going on, everybody? How are ya? How's your days going? Hope this is a nice, easy going Friday for you guys. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think that should be enough. Turn the rest of those into breadcrumbs later. Do, 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 do. Nice. A few people rolling through, it was good. <laughs> um, I gotta change that mirror. There we go. Whoop. Bam. That's what we're doing for dinner tonight. Thought that would be a really nice, easy. <laughs> right on. All right, and. I'll give that a quick share. Wham. Cool. Right on. 106. Wow. 110, 111. Damn. 116. Cool. Uh, what is going on, everybody? Okay, so uh, I guess anyone that's joining right now, I'm just doing a really simple. Leisha, how are you? Good to see ya. Thanks so much for the gifts, dude. How's your day going? Right on. Wow. Hey, thanks so much for the roses. Okay, so um, for tonight, I am doing for one of our followers who was the highest gifter for the last uh, Saturday Live. Um, I'm going ahead and she suggested a nice seared chicken recipe. So tonight I'm going to do a uh, chicken recipe that... Uh, nice. What do you have in the slow cooker? Nice. So yeah, so I thought I'd make a uh, classic recipe that I actually came up with uh, when I was working at a bistro in like... I'd say like the early to mid 2000s. It is a seared chicken with maple cream, uh, double reduced. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of just uh, just simple Montreal spiced potatoes. Uh, and then I'm also gonna do a honey type glazed veg. So it's gonna be broccoli, red onions, uh, and a little bit of green onions as well. Okay, and then for dessert, I'm just doing a really simple um, bread pudding. I got some bread that's uh, kind of just uh, on its way to becoming stale. So I took a couple of those, cut them up really, really small, uh, and I just throw them into the muffin tin um, as well. I'm going to leave the rest of those. I'm going to turn those into croutons. Buffalo chicken for berry stuff. Ooh, that's going to be good. Oh, yeah, dude. That's going to be so good. Right on, right on. And uh, anybody that's new, uh, where's Shannon? She's uh, just right now at work. Uh, finishing uh, that up. Uh, she's there till like five uh, and then she's gonna go pick up Rosemary uh, She's gonna grab our BB and they'll be back in a little bit. So I am pretty much on my own <laughs> For the next little bit, but it should be a fun time um, And anyone else that's new. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you guys. Uh, this is tonight's menu I'm just doing a simple seared chicken with maple cream some really nice uh, Montreal uh, Montreal spiced potatoes I'm going to be doing a honey, kind of a viche uh, vegetable. So it's broccoli, a little bit of green onions, and red onions. Wash to win. Hey, thank you so much. And Jamie, this 
veg this recipe right here goes out to you this is your uh this is my menu dedicated to you for being the highest gifter i appreciate you so much um yeah and then tonight as well i'm just doing a really simple uh vanilla type of bread pudding that i'm going to pair with a bit of like fresh uh like honey glazed nuts and a little bit of ice cream to finish okay so um yeah right now i got this going I just want to get this in the oven uh, at 350 degrees just so that it, uh, when dinner is pretty much ready to go, I can just pop these out and plate them as well. Uh, so I'm going to work on that really quick anglaise. Okay, so with the anglaise, I really want it to be like really rich and really decadent. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start with a uh, 156. So I'm going to do about a half cup of cream. I should put that right there so everyone can see it. Half cup of cream. And then I'm also going to start with Wash to win. Hey, thank you so much for the roses as well. I appreciate you. Yeah, if, uh, if anyone has a little extra time right now, uh, while I'm doing this, if you can go ahead and hit that like button for me, that would be much appreciated. Are you Asian? Yes, I am Filipino. I'm going to go with roughly about a cup. Yeah. A cup's worth of milk, just regular. Um, and I'm going to give it a little quick splash of the cream just to even that up. And then for roughly every cup of liquid, you're going to add in a uh, single egg. In this case, I'm just using regular large eggs, not the extra large, although I would just be using those as well. <laughs> hey, not much, man. How you doing today? Jamie, thank you so much for the hearts. I appreciate you. Yeah, menu's on the whiteboard, so I can just do a quick explanation while there's people rolling through. Tonight, I am doing a really quick, classic uh, seared chicken with ma uh, maple cream reduction. Uh, on the side, I'm going to be serving with some really simple but very nice uh, Montreal spiced potatoes. I'm going to do like a honey viche uh, type of veg on the side. And then I'm also right now just working on a really nice, simple bread pudding. Um, okay, so then I have my cream. I got my milk. I got my eggs. And I'm going to hit it with a splash of some vanilla extract. This isn't real vanilla, I know. But uh, it's also, again, it's economical. It's easy and cheap to get. But with every hit of vanilla... What I like to do is also hit it with just a little touch of the uh, rum extract as well. What this is going to do is it's going to, uh, I actually have an open one, I think. What this is going to do is it's going to um, help embolden the flavor just a touch uh, and give it a little bit more roundedness uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, vanilla flavor. Kaz, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you. And thank you so much for joining. How are you today? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and, where is it? There we are. It's going to go ahead and give this just a quick mix and pour over the bread pudding. So the secret to doing a really good bread pudding, generally speaking, is to, uh, when you put your liquid in, just go ahead and do it in, in like sections. You don't want to do it all at once. Do I deliver? <laughs> um, I mean, if you live in Calgary, you know, you can just come over and we can have some dinner together. Uh, as I always say, um, doors open, we got food on the table. Uh, so I just want to give this a quick mix. You'll notice with an anglaise as well that automatically the eggs really help thicken the, uh, the liquid, which is really awesome because at the end of the day, you don't want like the thinnest liquid. You actually want it to be more like an eggnog kind of consistency. Um, and again, also if it's too thin, just add in a single extra egg and that'll add the uh, fat content that's really necessary to creating a really good anglaise, okay? Uh, and in this case, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to just whip it so it's really airy on the way in. So it actually creates uh, a good amount of volume so that when it sits, um, it doesn't like cook or, or bake as like a lump, okay? I'm gonna just give that a quick rinse. Okay, right on. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that. Actually, you know what I did forget? You don't wanna forget, you wanna hit it with just a touch of uh, sugar. That is also an important factor in uh, dessert. <laughs> okay. Boom. 
Okay, so I did roughly about like three or four uh, tablespoons of sugar in there, uh, just because, yeah, you do kind of want to, uh, it doesn't want, you don't want it to just be all just cream, you know what I'm saying? What is an anglaise? Okay, so an anglaise is uh, Squidward, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Um, so what an anglaise is basically, it's just a thickened cream uh, using eggs, essentially, and you add uh, other spices, so vanilla, rum, or anything like that. Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna finish it with like a cinnamon sugar, um, just because I do want to have more of like that vanilla flavoring um, and then the uh, kind of like a cinnamon sugar at the end to give it that churro uh, kind of finish Bridget happy Friday. Thank you. How's your Friday going? I hope it was all a uh, really nice easy finish to your week Sorry. Yeah, maple is a uh, Is a thing here um, since I grew up uh, learning a lot of like French cuisine from Canadian French chefs uh, having maple uh, in all of your food is kind of like a rite of passage when you do um, Canadian French culinary <laughs> So we'll see what happens here. So right now I got all that mixed in a little bit of sugar milk cream eggs um, um, What I'm going to be doing actually is uh, do you ever post a menu before going live so we can cook with you? Yes, eventually I will be having uh, cook with me events uh, so those will be more on like a Saturday event uh, not this Saturday, but probably in the next two or three Saturdays coming up um, cause that's, I'm just trying to think of a really easy, accessible, economic menu that pretty much everyone can do. Um, at the same time, it's, uh, something that we can all do together, right? So my plan was to get, uh, a recipe written mise en place or like prep, uh, list, uh, going for you guys. And then you guys can do the pre-prep. And then when we go on live, you go ahead and just, we'll just cook it all together. <clears throat> yeah, I think it'll be, um, I think it should be fun. I just wanted to see if there was like a... Kind of, you know, I mean, if people are kind of interested in that kind of stuff, um, but if there is uh, at least like looks like there's three or four people in here that'll do that, uh, I think I might actually go ahead and just pull the trigger on it. Caitlin, hey, good to see you. Welcome. Hope you're having a really great Friday. How are you doing today? Um, yeah. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and just pour these uh, cups in with the uh, cream. Just fill it all the way up to the top because uh, it will absorb just like croutons they will absorb the majority of that liquid right away and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and let these kind of sit for a second okay yeah because uh I, essentially the best way when you're dealing with um bread puddings is you kind of want to like oversaturate them right away and then just let them rest just let them completely absorb the uh liquid as well as the uh as well as the eggs and all that good stuff. Uh, no, so um, right now, what I'm, uh, what's in the bread pudding mix? The bread pudding mix essentially is a hey, Iron Maiden. Good to see you, bro. How are you today? Um, yes. So with the bread, it is not brioche and Miss Worldwide. Thank you so much for the like or for the follow. I appreciate it. And Roots Six One Three. Thank you for the follow as well. Um, okay, so uh, to go back to it, the bread is essentially, I actually have these leftover burger buns uh, that I made for, uh, I made like burgers and like these chicken sandwiches as well for uh, Shannon and Rosemary. Um, so those are starting to just become a little bit stale. So I used like three or four of those, threw them into here. Uh, and the rest I'm actually just gonna go ahead and repurpose for like breadcrumbs or um, croutons. Um, I'm doing well, man, thank you. And for the bread pudding mix, essentially the bread pudding mix is, uh, equal parts more or less of cream and milk uh, for every cup of milk uh, or every cup of liquid is one egg as well as I hit it with a bit of the uh, vanilla um, and rum extract to get some of that really gorgeous uh, sweet cream as well as uh, savory flavors to go with the cream and about three or four tablespoons of sugar. Brandy D, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. And Trisha, I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Where are you guys from? How is everybody today? Yeah, yeah. And again, uh, this menu right here is dedicated to Jamie, uh, one of our really awesome followers. She uh, gave the most gifts on the last Saturday Live. So again, if you guys want to see a complete menu uh, written for you, and I, you know, you give the suggestions, you get to dictate what menu we do on a Saturday. Uh, today, I know it's not, I understand it's Friday, but I'm doing the Friday stream instead of a Saturday stream because it's my buddy's birthday tomorrow. Uh, so I won't be able to uh, do the live. <laughs> but again, if you guys donate today, uh, the highest person that gives the most amount of gifts today will get their choice of menu that they get to see. Jetstream Sam, Pinoy from Edmonton. Oh, 
Right on, dude. Yo, I got all my family up there <laughs> in Edmonton. It's mad Filipinos up there, dude. And Kelly, hey, welcome back. Good to see you. Coming from Nova Scotia. Right on, dude. Leisha, no worries. We will be here. Jamie, you're in Van? Hey, right on, dude. You want to know about this maple cream? Yep, in due time. In due time. Okay, so Jetstream Sam, thank you so much for the follow. Right on, guys. Yeah, and go ahead. Keep hitting those likes for me, guys. It really helps me out in the algorithm. Uh, gets me in front of eyes just like yourselves. People that are like-minded and want to talk about food, food culture, um, all that good stuff, okay? Yo, KG Campbell, thanks so much for the follow. Right on. Okay, so while this is resting... I have the oven preheated to 350 and uh, in the back, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw on these potatoes. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and just start heating the water right now. And I'm going to pull out. Oh, it's going to give these potatoes a quick wash because I'm going to keep the skin on. Okay, right on. So these are uh, generally known as baking potatoes. So now I usually wouldn't use baking potatoes uh, really outside of anything using for like anything outside of French fries or anything like that. Home of the Blackberry phone. <laughs> Absinthe, yes ma'am, I am Canadian. Waiting on my cabbage rolls in the slow cooker. Ooh, those are gonna be so fire. Yeah, dude. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so again, these are like regular baking potatoes, and I usually really wouldn't use these uh, outside of making french fries or uh, doing like fried hash browns or something like that. Um, just because, again, uh, they just color really, really quickly. Um, but the thing is, I will probably never use these for things like mashed potatoes or like um, scalloped potatoes or anything like that, just because, again, they just color a little bit too hard. Abdul Hassan, hey, how you doing, buddy? How's your day going? I hope you're having a really great Friday. Montreal, yes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to chop these up into uh, just relatively uh, large cubes. Um, and then I'm just going to get them on the back burner here, just simmering. So what I want to do is I'm just breaking them down uh, so that they become soft. So that when I do decide to uh, cool them down and pan fry them, they'll be nice, um, nice, uniform, completely cooked through and uh, guaranteed so that the outside will be nice, gorgeous and crispy while maintaining a really good soft uh, interior you know what oh also the reason i also picked these up is that these are for some reason cheaper uh at the store than the uh what do you call it even like the white potatoes and stuff like that so again we just work with what we have and uh just try to do the best that we can you know what i'm saying uh abdul i'm doing very well man thank you so much uh it's been a really good day weather's gorgeous and today's menu sounds fire. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, again, this is a menu dedicated to one of our followers. Uh, she donated the most uh, gifts on the last uh, live. So again, that's something I'm doing for you guys. If you guys want to control a Saturday live and have a menu dedicated to you, go ahead, keep gifting. I appreciate you guys for doing it. If you can't, I also appreciate if you guys can hit the likes as much as humanly possible. Again, that helps me in the algorithm, keeps me in front of other people like yourselves, people that want to talk about food, food culture, all that good old stuff. All right. Choo choo ya. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Made these for breakfast. Hey, right on, dude. And Jamie, thank you again so much for the roses. I appreciate it, man. Okay, so uh, in the back, I'm actually just going to go with the one potato. I think this will actually be just enough. It was one of them oversized joints. So this will be enough for about two and a half people, which is exactly our family. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to let these uh, go ahead and simmer out for a little bit. And I'm going to go and aim for them to be fork tender. So now... I'm just gonna go ahead and start uh, just a little bit of the mise en place for uh, the veg tonight. Um, so tonight I'm basically just gonna use red onions and uh, broccoli, which I think will be really good. Uh, a little bit of garlic and a little bit of green onions for the side veg. You got a high of 15, damn. Yeah, I think we hit like zero or maybe plus two today in Calgary. Cause it's warm like it's great out here man like the wind there's no wind it's just fresh everything just is amazing <laughs> jules thanks so much for the follow i appreciate it 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my veg. I'm just gonna just put some of this stuff back into the fridge. <sighs> Boom. Okay, and eggs. Boom. Okay, right on. So I'm gonna go ahead and blast that about, uh, it's on the low burner, so that means I'm gonna put it at about a seven. That should bring it up to a, just a nice, uh, not crazy boil, but more of a rapid simmer, just so that can cook without breaking apart. <clears throat> 12, ooh, that's good, that's so nice. Saskatoon got dumped. Yeah, but you guys, it wasn't cold though, right? Absinthe, you're in Cochrane. Hey, right on, dude. I used to love Cochrane like back in the day when it was like smaller, you go out there for paintball and stuff. Um, Saskatoon, you might have gotten snow, but it wasn't that cold, I assume, right? Because we got snow like yesterday or the day before, um, but it was like that soft, gorgeous, puffy type of snow, super airy, amazing. Cape Breton still digging out of the wolf. <laughs> Shit, dude. 160 centimeters snow, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cut up my broccoli. Uh, I do want to have slightly smaller florets so that when I do uh, the kind of a viche, uh, it's like a butter and sugar or butter and honey situation, uh, it'll be a much easier, more uniform uh, cook time, right? Nice and fast, nothing too crazy. Again, when I'm breaking down the broccoli, um, what, what you'll notice is I'm not just cutting it like straight through. What I am liking, to, what I did... Uh, sorry, learned a lot to do was to slit it down the thing and then give it a tear. What this does is that it does, it just kind of guarantees you get like an even distribution of that stem. I know that's a small factor, <laughs> but it's something that I kind of learned from uh, a lot of previous chefs um, just in my past because it's something that I prefer doing um, when you break down uh, broccoli, right? Just so that it guarantees more of like that uh, more uniform uh cook time right as well as it looks more rustic that's that's uh, also a factor that i really really love okay so with the uh when you get up to like the higher part of the uh floret i won't even worry about it just gonna give them a quick tear keep them pretty consistent because at the end of the day these are going to be very quickly cooked so it maintains um they become soft and cooked but they still may like maintain a good crunch to them oh man absent thank you so much i really do love food it's been uh what do you call it? Food has just been one of my things uh, growing up as well as like throughout my career <clears throat> as a chef. Um, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I don't know if I can live without cooking. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I'm usually nervous in front of the camera, um, especially when I do like filming or anything like that. So it's uh, I appreciate the compliment. I really do. Just saw a video of snowboarding on Cape Smoky, Cape Breton. It looked amazing. Damn. Yeah, they must like, how was the snow out there? Is it like that hard pack stuff? Is it the more fluffy stuff for skin? Um, Cause I know like that whole weather situation been going right across the country, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so now I got my bread puddings. Uh, I've been sitting, resting. So now I'm just gonna just take the leftover and then just try to top off the uh, bread puddings here, boom. All right. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, try to maximize just like all the liquid going in. You can see that it kind of stopped absorbing it. So that's kind of what you're looking for, right? So just gonna finish off the liquid as best as I can. I have like two or three more drops left. Yeah, that'll do. Just without messing it up. All right, and then I'm gonna let that sit for another just five minutes. And then I'm gonna throw that into the oven, 350 degrees. And uh, probably it'll be in there for like 15 to 18 minutes, maybe even 22. All right, just let that dry off. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I got the potatoes in the back. Uh, I'm gonna give those a drain in a little bit here. Again, I got my broccoli florets cut up. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, some simple red onion cubes. Um, I think I'm only gonna go with like half of a red onion today just because uh, I don't really need all that much. So then you're gonna pull out the exterior Right, just because it saves you a bunch of time. We're just gonna cut these into uh, like size or like size cubes as the potatoes. 
Okay. Just like that. Boom. All right. <sighs> Slade, hey, thanks for joining, dude. I appreciate you for being here. What is going on with my screen right now? Hold up. There we go. All right. So what is bread pudding? So bread pudding is basically I made uh, what's known as an anglaise. An anglaise is uh, just uh, milk, cream, eggs, uh, essentially, uh, that's whipped together. So it's like a creme brulee kind of um, mixture. And then I put it over top of just regular bread. Um, and then I'm just letting that soak into the bread. So what you do then is you take it, put it into an oven, uh, fairly low temperature, and that's going to cook the bread into a really gorgeous kind of a pudding, like a warm pudding. You allow that to rest and you can take it out of the pan and then plate it accordingly. Nice. Yeah, right on, dudes. Hey, Jamie, thanks so much for sharing this live. I appreciate it. Uh, and as well, anyone out there, if you guys can go ahead, keep hitting those likes for me and then also sharing this live, uh, that would be muchly appreciated because most likely if you guys are here, you guys will share it with somebody who will also love uh, being on this live. Every time, Slade, I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much. Okay, so I got all my uh, relative veg just kind of started and on the go. All right, um, I might just do up my garnishes right now. Okay, so I have some pre-washed uh, green onions. I take the tips off, boom. And again, uh, the reason, if you guys are always here on my lives, the reason I use green onions is A, right now this is in season, uh, or sorry, it remains in season, so it's relatively cheap for a garnish. Uh, and B, I really love green onions and potatoes. It's a uh, flavor profiling that I just can't get over, especially if you have it for breakfast, you have it for lunch, baked potatoes, all that good stuff. It's just amazing. Hey, <laughs> Slade, man, I appreciate you, dude. Thanks so much. Yeah, exactly. With raisins and cream over it. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, today I'm actually going to just be making a really simple like cinnamon sugar. And then I'm going to finish it with a really fresh, uh, just a really plain whipped cream. Just to kind of give it some extra uh, creaminess, right? <coughs> yeah, dude. Kelly Turner. Love it. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Okay, so yeah. So I'm just going to get these uh, small garnishes just out of the way. And then I'm just going to do a quick uh, whipped cream. So I have that on deck uh for when the uh, bread pudding's all good to go. Actually, while I'm here, I gotta actually crush up uh, a little bit of garlic for, for the uh, vegetables. Okay. Um, again, I'm just uh, giving it a rough relative chop just so it's all kind of even um, Because again, uh, I don't want anybody to just take a massive just gnarly bite of garlic as much as we do love garlic in this house uh, My little girl she's coming around to it. So I don't want to like <laughs> Just give her like the bomb fucking of garlic to the face. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna put these with my onions bam all right just like that and while this is going uh, on the front burner, I'm gonna go ahead and, how is this going? Cool. So you notice that like the cream is actually not super loose anymore, right? It has a little bit of liquidness to it. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, throw this into the top rack of my oven and I'm gonna let that go. So roughly, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start with like 18 minutes. Just because it is, um, what do you call it? Muffin size. So my assumption is that they will take less time than if you were to do like a bread pan. <sighs> yeah, it's one time you don't mind raisins. I mean, yo, a hey, raisins are dope in specific things. That's for damn sure. Momo F girls. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. And, and Ian, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Okay, so Montreal potatoes are essentially just like what Calgarians call seasoned potatoes. Um, I use primarily uh, Montreal steak spice for pretty much everything. Steaks, potatoes, french fries, um, a lot of chicken dishes, pork. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, so the Montreal potatoes is the uh, cubed potatoes. I'm gonna let them drain, sear them off in a pan till they're nice and crispy, and then I'm gonna hit them with just some Montreal steak spice, maybe just a little bit of oil and butter, uh, and a little bit of garlic powder. Boom, super easy. And uh, cherry tarts. Okay, so your the cherry tarts. I was using a puff pastry. Right? You can go to the store, you can buy a pre-made uh, frozen sheet of uh, folded puff pastry, I'll, but the real trick behind that puff pastry is to allow it to come to room temperature so it's nice and soft so that when you unfold it, it will have no breaks. If there is breaks, just um, dab your finger into a little bit of water, give it a quick squish, right? put it together, right? give it a squish till that seam goes away, just like pie crust, and then you can just go from there. Two, and you're not from Canada. Oh, where are you from? Oh, that's right. Yeah, potatoes like that are just to me, just like steakhouse potatoes, really seasoned, um, really crispy and super fluffy on the inside. Those to me have always been like the pinnacle of potatoes that go with any type of meat. You know what I mean? It's just the stuff that I really love. Okay, so now my potatoes are on a nice simmer. I'm just gonna wait at least uh, about six or eight minutes for those to come uh, and finish. I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe down. Okay, good to go. Now, so I got my veg here, veg here, garnish, garlic's in that. I got my bread puddings in, potatoes are started. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping up uh, the uh, maple cream as well as the chicken. All right. So maple cream. Let's get a uh, just a small pan out. Do I have one of those? All right. So when it comes to doing a nice maple cream, you're just going to essentially. How do I want to start this? I'm going to start with just a little bit of my red onion. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go with like, say, just enough that it kind of emulates the equivalency of like two shallots, two shallots worth. And it's nice to have red onion and cream as well because it offsets this like kind of um, sweetness that can now be balanced out with that oniony flavor, which is more of like a savory note. So it's like the equivalent of adding bay leaf to something, uh, per se. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that at about a five on the uh, large burner. Uh, do I have... There you are. Whack. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, roughly about two tablespoons of butter, salted. Boom, just like that. All right. And then while that's melting, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my uh, red onions on top of that. The reason I'm doing everything from cold in this, uh, in this moment is that I do want to control the amount of cook that happens on the uh, red onions. Because if you start to... Uh, you can clarify your onions, but the second you start getting caramelization is when you start getting a little bit more flavor imparted. And I'm trying to prevent the amount, I'm trying to get clarification and water draw rather than uh, caramelization at this moment. Um, purple, purple God, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, it should be uh, relatively, you make O'Brien potatoes, green peppers, onions wrapped in foil. Yo, those are a classic campfire uh, dish, dude. Those are, yeah. What's your favorite potato to use with that? Because I remember I made it with um, like baby baby potatoes, like baby roaster potatoes, um, all that good stuff. Okay, so you'll see that it's now starting to melt the butter, take on a little bit of that color, which is gorgeous. All right. Yeah, nice. So we'll wait till it starts to uh, simmer away, start getting uh, and imparting a bunch of that flavor. Then we'll add a little bit of maple syrup to uh, reduce and meld with that butter. So it becomes more of like a, what do you call it? More of like an emulsion. Then I'm gonna deglaze it with a little bit of white, uh, sorry, just a bit of heavy cream. And let that bad boy reduce all the way. 
You can, in fact, use uh, half and half or heavy cream. Uh, the reason I... Oh, yeah, dude. Hey, Leisha, definitely, man. If you can, send me a picture. Tell me how it turned out. If you got any questions on how to make it or uh, you need suggestions, just let me know as well. I've made so much goddamn bread pudding in my entire life that it's, like, ridiculous. <laughs> it's true, right? Every good meal starts with an onion, a little bit of garlic, you know what I'm saying, and an idea. Um, those are always the best kinds of uh, meals to start with. Your thoughts on Papa John's? Uh... I mean, pretty good. Like, they, I think they were the first people to, like, really offer the idea of, like, dipping your pizza crust in this stuff. Um, for that, I'll say that's fire. Um, the dough itself, it's, like, it's not too bad. I'm not a huge fan of their uh, tomato sauce because I do believe it's a little bit on the sweeter side. Uh, again, I grew up with a lot of people who are, like, Italian or Italian-Canadian. And their tomato sauces, like, their Nona's used to make usually is um, kind of more of a savory uh flavor um where it's like you know it's just regular it's tomato basil oregano uh, a little bit of garlic and then you puree it right spread that on really really rustically and it's a more of a really delicious more savory item um whereas i find like with like fast food pizzas i don't mind them like little caesars papa john's pizza hut domino's they all kind of share like the same kind of like sweet slightly sweet and really oregano-y basil flavor which uh i do appreciate uh, because the thing is, again, my wife hates Pizza Hut. I love. I grew up with Pizza Hut, so I love the fact that it's like the greasiest thing on the planet. You know what I mean? The like th the thickness of that crust really, to me, hits the spot at the same time. Um, Oi, way! Thanks so much for sharing the live. Damn, dude, I love that. Uh, yeah, and Pizza Hut. I mean, again, it's uh, what do you call it? It depends on who makes it. Because uh, I've had really good um, Pizza Hut. I've had really good Domino's. Um, but it, again, it kind of depends on who's working the, uh, in that moment. Um, the pizza, I will say, though, that doesn't sit or sorry, that doesn't last the longest is uh, Little Caesars or Pizza 73. Ain't nobody talking about Pizza 73. That shit is good if like you're super wasted. <laughs> yeah, Pizza Hut used to be the bomb when like in the, the early, early and late 90s to the 2000s. Like, does anyone remember when they had what's known as the Bigfoot? right it was like this gigantic square joint or like they used to do um yo pizza 73 donair pizza is fire though um the best is when you take two pieces and just put them together just eat it like a sandwich um so right now on the pan i'm getting a good amount of clarification on uh the red onions which is uh, something that i really really like really need the potatoes are becoming Yep, they're almost to the point where they are completely fork tender. So I'm gonna be pulling these guys off uh, relatively quickly, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and lower that heat down and then I'm gonna drain them uh, into a colander. There we go. All right, but it's awesome because butter and red onions is such like a, you can smell it, it's just fragrant. It has a good amount of uh, Don and Bella, thank you so much. I appreciate it. As always, you guys, welcome for joining. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. It's not the same without Nanners being on live. I'll be real. Good buddies, Chinese food is the best. Where's that at? Because I love, again, like the thing that really gets me is like, it's, it's not authentic, but Chinese takeout has got to be like my favorite thing on the planet. That, you know what I'm saying? It's your weekly cooking class. Hey, right on, dude. I appreciate you, though, for guys for being here. Oh, West Edmonton. Yo, hey, is Good Buddy Chinese Food that place that used to sell? It was like all 125 items for like for like 15 bucks. Like you get a like you get two fucking containers of food. Was it that place? Because if I'm not mistaken, it was like they was they were in like the food court with the uh, electric circus. I only have multi-grain bread. Will that work? Yes, absolutely it will. Live above a Chinese takeout place. Oh, you're so lucky. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Yeah, I used to, um, back when I, back, I'd say in the mid 2000s, I lived with this homie down in uh, Kensington here in the city. And uh, 
Yo, what do you do with bacon grease? You put it into a container. Like grab like a one liter when it's cooled down, like it's liquidy, but it's cold. Put it into here, add a little bit of uh, butter to it, whip it together, put it into your fridge. Use that when you make um, like grilled cheeses, like smear that on, right? Put it face, put that down into the pan, let it sear, put your cheese on top, boom. Um, you can also use it as a replacement for your butter. Bacon grease is like, it's, it's liquid gold. Chris and Mac, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. <laughs> Schmear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so good. So I'm starting to take on just a slight bit of uh, clarification. And I'm now starting to get a little bit of color. So I'm going to prevent that and just add in a little bit of cream right now. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that cream, I'm just gonna add a small pinch of green onions to it as well. Bring up that extra bit of flavor, okay? And then, while that's reducing, on the first uh, portion of the reduction, I'm gonna go ahead. Yes, um, if, your pan, if your muffin pan is not uh, non-stick, right? Because I also say, like, if you're gonna use non-stick pans, just give it, like, use pan spray, shh, give that a hit. Um, but if it is a non-stick, uh, sorry, if it's this, one of those like regular steel pans, make sure that it's well greased so that the uh, inglaze doesn't stick. Or the other option you can do is turn down your oven to like a 325 as opposed to 350. And that'll guarantee that, uh, not guarantee, but it will help that you don't get a lot of extra cook on the bottom. Yo, ugh, Korean fried chicken, dude. Oh, you're hitting all the classics here, bro. I love, I love Korean fried chicken. Like I love fried chicken in general. Yes, what do you got for questions? Thinking of making homemade meatballs. I absolutely, absolutely. I've made a ton of meatballs in my life. What kind of meatballs are you looking for? Um, what are you making them out of? Are you doing pork? Are you doing beef? Are you doing, uh, are you doing chorizo? What are you saying? In my opinion, I love a good, I love a meatball that's made with um, both beef and chorizo. That's one of my favorite things on the planet. Uh, you add in your oregano, a little bit of basil. Um, you add in a little bit of extra chilies to kind of give it a little bit extra life. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drain out my potatoes because now they're starting to become nice and uh, plump, starting to slightly split from the uh, from their skins, and that's at the point where you know that when you fry them up, they'll be nice and crispy. Nothing non-stick in my house because I have a pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then if that's the case go ahead and uh, if you got pan spray um just go ahead give your um non-sticks a good or sorry your like your regular steel stuff a good spraying if you don't have uh spray go ahead use uh, a little bit of canola or vegetable oil make sure that the uh, top bottom sides even the outside like the exterior part of the uh of the cup is actually um completely covered right with a bit of oil just to guarantee that uh, if there is any overflow that it won't stick to it, right? If it does stick, it's still bread pudding. You're still good. You know what I'm saying? Just take a small paring knife, wait till it's cool, right? Give it a small workaround, very slowly, very gingerly, and then try to lift it from the thing as is. Kiki Thick Affiliate. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you for being here. Made pasta with guanciale. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, dude. That is fire. Uh, what do you store your bacon grease in? To be honest, you can pretty much use anything as long as it's san as long as it's been sterilized or it's sanitary, like it's brand new. Um, so again, if anyone knows the channel, I really advocate for using one liter containers in any professional kitchen or industrial kitchen. You'll always see us eating out of these, drinking out of these, taking food home in these, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So that to me is important. But you can also, if you save um, like jam jars, if you save um any glass jar that'll work for you as well um and i don't see a problem with doing any of those things okay so right now i have cream going i'm going to turn the back burner on to a two and a half boom all right so now um uh, it's only 5 30 right on dude let's give this a check i'm sitting at two minutes oh yeah those are starting to really puff up um, again, uh, the bread puddings do puff up in a good sense, but then once you let them uh, rest, they should just now sink without going deflated. They should just rise and then uh, sink flat. And that is the best way to go. Take out souping. Yes, absolutely. 
Kiki Thick fam, welcome back. Thanks again for the follow. I appreciate it. And thanks for the heart. Oh man, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Can you add cut vegetables in meatballs? Absolutely you can. Um, as long as they are cut relatively uh, small and it's easier to have them pre-cooked so they just don't release so much water. Things like mushrooms, peppers. Um, you can also do zucchini. I've seen um, some of the best uh, things that you can also add to your meatballs is adding beans. Like things like crushed chickpeas, things like crushed kidney beans, um, legumes of any sort, um, as well as uh, what those little guys, those little... I can't remember what they're called, but uh, the little lentils, little green lentil joints, right? Smash that into your meat as well. It adds uh, a boost of protein and flavor um, as well to the party. Pasta, broccolini, pesto pasta is also, yeah. I don't, you know, anyone that knows me lo knows that I love me some charred broccolini. Um, and I love pesto. It's like one of my favorite things as well. That's your live stream account. Hey, I appreciate you for being here then. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. What, A. Cruz, what am I cooking up? Oh yeah, absolutely. Cut up your onions, but make sure you give them a saute because anything you can do to add flavor, build that really good flavor profile before adding it into your uh, meat, your raw meat, is be highly beneficial. So A. Cruz, right now, uh, dedicated to one of my lovely followers for the amount of uh, gifts that she gave on last Saturday's uh, this goes out to Jamie SS80. Um, if you look at the whiteboard here, like she just mentioned, we are doing, dedicated to her, a gorgeous seared chicken with maple cream. Maple cream I have reducing slowly on the back burner right here. We are doing a nice Montreal potato. It's basically just uh, simmered potatoes that have been um, allowed to uh, boil, soften. I'm gonna let them rest. Then I'm gonna be hitting them in a pan, a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, and uh, Montreal steak spice uh, seasoning. Uh, I'm doing a honey veg viche kind of veg. So it's just sweet honey, a little bit of uh, garlic salt, toss, toss, and that's gonna be the side veg. So that's broccoli, that's garlic, and that's red onions. Uh, and in the oven right now, coming out, I have some bread pudding in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and put that in for another additional, just five more minutes, just because it does not have the uh, color, the level of color that I really prefer to see. Do I like cilantro? I do, but cilantro is only really good in specific things. You cannot be using it for everything. Lynn, hey, welcome. Good to see ya. How was your day, Ben? I hope it was a really good, easy Friday. Hey, David, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys for uh, joining today too. Um, you guys are a great audience and really interactive. It's something I really appreciate. Um, as well, uh, speaking of that, if you guys can, can you please go ahead, hit those like buttons for me. Um, sorry, I am actually working on a cookbook, uh, 100%. Um, if you guys can go ahead, hit that like button for me. Again, it helps me in the algorithm. Stay in front of eyes just like yourselves. Um, gets me in front of people that just love talking about food, food culture, recipes, um, restaurant culture, chef life, chef culture, all that good stuff, okay? Um, yeah, and if you guys can keep hitting that as well, if you guys can share this live while it's on the go, uh, I'd love it dearly because again, if you guys are here, most likely you're gonna share it with somebody who will also wanna be here as well. A seafood boil, not too often, uh, but I have had it. Uh, the thing is about having a seafood boil here in Calgary is that we're a landlocked city um, and getting like seafood that's relatively like high in volume but cheap is like hard, it's expensive. <laughs> so we try to limit those kind of days uh, pretty, uh, like we try to limit that. But I'll be real, one of the best seafood boils I think I've ever had, uh, me and my wife were in uh, Seattle. There's a place off of Pike's place called the Crab Pot. Leisha, thank you so much for the fire. I appreciate you for doing that. Um, yeah, but there's a place called the Crab Pot and like they just take that shit and just throw it onto your table and you just eat with your hand. Oh man, so fire. Mindful, not mindless eating. Absolutely. Um, because again, uh, I used to be, um, I used to deal with my depression with eating. Uh, and I used to call it like eating my problems. And uh, my thing is it's nourishment for the heart and soul, not just for uh, your body, right? So uh, in this kind of channel and all that stuff, we always try to advocate for eating food that you love um, as well as something that you can just guarantee that you're gonna love 
uh, in the long term. Does my wife respect my cooking? Absolutely she does. Or at least I think she does. <laughs> right on, guys. Yeah. Entire life until four years. Hey, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oi, way. Thanks so much for sharing the live. Hey, right on, dude. I appreciate you. Uh, my wife uh, doesn't enjoy cooking as much as she enjoys baking. That is the trade-off we have in the house. I do all the cooking, uh, whereas she's like on top because I'm not a good baker, right? So like uh, she takes care of all the good stuff like the breads, the cookies. Um, like we spent, um, oh man, we go through these like mad ADHD like moments where like, uh, okay, I got a minute 50. We got like, we got, we go through like moments where like we actually mastered, um, how to do like the French macaron in the best way. Like it's guaranteed every single time. Uh, I think that might be a recipe we might put out eventually, but it is one of those videos that's gonna, it's like super lengthy. But once you know the method, it is fire, it's guaranteed. Uh, you can find pictures of that on my um, Instagram page. One more question for meatballs. Um, what's the breakdown on making them and what meat do you recommend? Okay, yo Pyro. Um, the best way to do it is meat in the bowl first, right? Then add your toppings cold on top. Plus, uh, so it would be your toppings. So it would, whether or not be uh, breadcrumbs, always use a little bit of breadcrumb or a binder, like a dry binder. Not too much. So if it's like a pound of beef, you're gonna use like maybe a cup, uh, a cup, maybe even less of breadcrumb. You're gonna use some eggs for sure. Um, you're gonna add in just your extra spices. So any any of your seasonings, any of your uh, um, like salt, pepper, all that stuff, you're gonna add in and uh, Yeah, and then that's it. And then you're gonna give that a quick mix with your hands, right? Make sure you wash your hands first, right? Mix, mix, mix. And then when you do your scooping, one of the easiest methods that I know of, if you want the smaller meatballs, um, I recommend like the, just the pinch method, pinch and roll, right? Whereas if you're gonna do like the slightly bigger meatballs, like the two or three ounce meatball, which I recommend, what the best method for that is get an ice cream scoop, scoop it out of the bowl, put it onto the tray, right? Do all the balls ahead of time. Then you're gonna pick them up one at a time, give them a final roll, put them back on the sheet tray, like a baking tray, shoot those in the oven for about 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes till they're fully cooked. And then you have um, those on deck. You can, uh, if you're not gonna use them, you can throw them into your freezer. Um, or you can use them right away. Let them rest for a couple minutes. Then in a pan, you're gonna sear them, boom, add your tomato sauce to that, add your pasta, give that a quick toss, lovely. And do you know the Arza, Arza Dons out there? I don't believe I do. To be honest with you though, I don't know a lot of people's last names, if that is their last name. Sent Team Bracelet, Team Bracelet, damn, thanks so much for that, I appreciate it. Oh, uh, cause I play guitar. Um, I usually will paint both my hands, but like I love, um, I'll paint this one cause it's my fretting hand. Um, and then like this hand usually like just gets destroyed on my guitar strings. Um, and I'm right now trying a new uh, palm muting technique that just annihilates um, the paint. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate that because I love, again, I love, um, what do you call it? I love, I've been painting my nails since I was like 15. <laughs> Maple cream, yes, sir. So check this out. In the back here, I have just a little bit. It's cream. It's uh Clar not clarified, but it's cream, butter, a little bit of lightly sauteed red onions. Uh, there's some green onions for a little bit of that green onion flavor as well as texture. Um, and then it's um, a little bit of maple syrup for the sweetness. Whoa, damn. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so that's been allowed to uh, reduce. And I used, um, in this case, I used heavy cream. So I'm just allowing this to reduce down so it becomes um, double reduced, which is like a, creates a really great thickness and natural... Um, what do you call it? Natural sauce that I don't have to thicken with anything. Nice. 47 years. Good for you guys, though. Congratulations. Yeah, dude, if you guys get a chance, if you ever get a chance, Rico, go ahead. Um, the best way to do it is uh, a little bit of butter in a pan, saute whatever vegetables or whatever um, kind of savory spiced uh, ingredient that you're going to use. So your garlic, your... Uh, red onion, your shallots, anything like that. Saute it very, very lightly so you don't take on too much of the color. You just get an extraction of uh, liquid. 
right? Then you're gonna deglaze with a little bit of, um, you can use wine, you can use uh, rum, you can use vodka, or, or you don't have to use any at all, which I didn't today. Just hit it with your cream, let that reduce, right? Become to like a really soft simmer. I added in a, a hit of my maple syrup uh, and then brought the heat down. So now it's just sitting at like on the small burner, sitting at a two and a half, really, really gorgeous. Yo, Pyro, absolutely, man. That's what I'm here for. Uh, <laughs> Kiki, it's, it's strictly because like I don't feel my hands anymore. I've been in the game 25 years. Like I can almost reach into an oven and just pull stuff out. Speaking of that. Oh yeah, dude. Nice. Hi honey. How's your day? You had a good day? Okay, good. So I got my bread pudding out here. So now it's uh, taken on a good amount of puff, as you can see, but this is not completely done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the middle rack and raise the temperature in the oven from 350 to 400. I'm gonna leave it like that for approximately uh, another five or six minutes. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because as much as it is souffléed, I do want to get a very finalized crust on the very top. Okay, yes, sir. I am just actually just currently mostly waiting on uh, the bread pudding to become finished. And now I'm actually gonna be working on the chicken, getting that seared, uh, put into the oven, and then I'm gonna start my potatoes. And we're pretty much on the home stretch. Um, speaking of that, but I do have the bread pudding coming out. So what I'm gonna do uh, as well to help finish that, I'm just gonna do a small, easy uh, whipped cream. Okay, so with that bread pudding, again, it's um, a good amount of uh, vanilla and sugar. So I'm gonna add to my whipped cream just a hit of sugar. And then I'm also gonna put in just a small hit of the rum extract, right? To get that uh, really bold rum flavor, just a small dash. And then also I'm gonna hit it with uh, a bit of the Kraken uh, black rum just so it also yeah. takes on just a small, just a small hit, like maybe a tablespoon. Uh, and it'll take on a good amount of that great uh, woody kind of flavor, which I really want to enhance. Cream cheese icing. Cream cheese icing. Okay, so uh, any tips? Uh, first and foremost, use powdered sugar if you're gonna put any sweetness into your cream cheese and do make sure that your cream cheese is at room temperature. Um, one of the things, best ways to do a whipped cream cheese icing, especially, is to um, use a, a mixer, like a stand mixer, 100%, or one of them electric joints. Nobody wants to be like trying to whip that by hand. It just, it's just nuts. Um, but yeah, and then if you also want to give it a little bit more levity and stuff like that, I do recommend um, use cream. Um, or just like, but add your cream or your milk in small stages because you don't want it to split, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, she is lucky, but I would say I'm uh, the lucky one in the relationship because I get to hang out with her uh, most days. <laughs> yeah, but she does the baking. That is so damn true. <laughs> All right, so in the back, I got this wicked reduction. Like you can see it, like you can see it cover um, the sides, right? Really thick, gorgeous. Yeah, and it's taking on like a good maple and red onion flavor. Um, if you guys haven't tried that, it is one of the most amazing um, kind of flavor, savory flavor profiles that I just can't get over. Okay, so I'm gonna let this bad boy just rest, do its thing right here. Okay, I wanna go ahead and give this a uh, whip really quickly what happened to that whipping device no all right here it is great all right i'm just gonna make a really quick uh whipped cream so again it's just sugar um sugar uh rum extract and a little bit hit of the uh kraken black rum green peas on toast a hey, hell yeah uh green peas toasted with like on toast with garlic butter is amazing Cheat crease. <laughs> Cheat and crease. Okay. Um, yeah, that's out of three. So I'm just going to let that whip. 
really quickly. Right on, dudes. How can I make garlic butter at home? Yo, sorry. One of the best ways, in my opinion, is um, you're going to just get two birds stoned at once here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go buy one of those bags of like pre-peeled uh, garlic cloves because they're perfect. Okay. And then in a small uh, small pot or um, a pot big enough to kind of house at least half of the bag, you like something like this, right? Something like this. Fill it. Fill it with like half the garlic. Then you're going to put in uh, just enough to cover it. You're going to put just oil. Then you're going to place that bad boy on the lowest heat setting on your stove. Okay. What's my girlfriend's ethnicity? Um, she is from the sunny beaches of uh, Abbotsford, British Columbia. <laughs> Assorted crackers. <laughs> that, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> I do move. I exist basically. Yeah. Crackers. Do I? Uh, I no, I don't. No? There? That's what she looks like. <laughs> right? You get what I'm saying? Sunny beaches of Abbotsford. Hell yeah. So right now I got the uh, whipped cream. I'm going to bring this to like a more of a uh, hard peak. <laughs> PC girl. Yeah. She does like chocolate. She likes that uh, chocolate caramel situation, if you know what I mean. Lisa Crowther. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's beautiful inside and out, 100%. I think she's just awesome because she lets me hang out with her. You know what I'm saying? All right, so then I got a nice, relatively hard peak whipped cream going, all right? And I'm looking at 10 seconds on my bread pudding, so that will allow me to uh, let the uh, let the bread pudding rest. Yeah, nice hard, nice and stiff. Well, I'm gonna let that do its thing. Give this a quick rinse. Right, so you know, put that on the back right here. Boom. Just move this to the sink. Okay, I'm gonna pull out the bread puddings. So at this point, they should already have. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Right. So they did puff, which is awesome. But that's the kind of color. Just a little bit of that uh, crispy exterior. While these rest, these will actually deflate back into the uh, muffin pans, as is. And then that will be awesome to be able to just kind of peel out of the, uh, out of the uh, muffin tins, right? Put onto a plate a little bit of the whipped cream uh, and a little bit of maple syrup or something to kind of just help finish it with that cinnamon sugar. <laughs> All right, so that is good to go. Cool, and I have my oven now set to 400. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna pull out my trusty pie pan, otherwise my otherwise known as my roasting tray. Okay, it's so gonna give that a quick uh, hit with oil just on the bottom, just to kind of leave it out. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to double use my pan. See, as you can see in the back uh, that it um, now is completely deflated, right? But you can see that it actually is really easy to peel off of the sides. Even if it doesn't peel nicely, uh, what I'm going to end up doing anyways is giving it a scoop. I'm going to put it into a parfait cup and then I'm going to just do it in layers where I, because uh, really all I want is the component of the, the bread pudding. Uh, no, I use like that witch, like that wine glass thing with no uh, stem. <laughs> I call that your... I call that a parfait cup. Or I might end up using that ramen cup, which I think is really, really cute too. No, case, no. <laughs> Nine hundred dollars left to pay it. It's dead now. That sucks. Yo, my bad. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to the live. I appreciate it. Can I make lasagna next time? I absolutely can. Yes. 
hundred percent. Um, actually, if anything, I'll probably show you how to do like a hack lasagna uh, that doesn't take like forever. It'll just be kind of like something that you just make on the fly. Um, that should just be in the oven. It should take roughly about maybe an hour uh, in total to make, start to finish. Chickens are the number one abused animal besides fish. Uh, yeah. My bad. How are you this evening? How's everything? Case, thanks so much for the fire. I appreciate it. Can I make mashed potatoes next next time? Absolutely, I can. I haven't done mashed potatoes yet. Mags lit. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you guys. Yo, if you guys can help me out, uh, keep hitting that follow button for me. Uh, that would be much, muchly appreciated. Okay, so... Here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start my uh, chicken breasts. And again, when it comes to doing uh, chicken breasts, because we have uh, this gorgeous sauce in the back, I don't want to cover it up too much with anything uh, extra. So uh, with it, what I'm going to be doing is uh, in the pan, I'm actually just going to try to um, encourage more of a... Uh, more of a sear that really develops a good... Uh, what do you call it? Good crust uh, initially. So when it comes to uh, doing the chicken breast, what I'm really going to be doing is, damn, these even have the filet on them? Kick ass. Hell yeah. Okay, so I'm going to leave them as is, whole. Okay. You could, if you don't have a lot of time, or you're cooking chicken breast, uh, you know, with limited time, all that stuff, you could also go ahead and butterfly it. Um, which is also a great method for searing. It does uh, make a bigger breast. So instead of going from here, it actually butterflies open to like that, which gives you a more circumference. But uh, yeah, yeah, yo, mashed potatoes and lasagna is like nap time city. That <laughs> like if you if you want to eat that at like three p.m. and then wake up like the next day, that's like the meal. That's the meal, hundred <laughs> percent. Hey, Kays, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here, man. You guys interacting is like so, uh, it's just mind blowing that people are like super into this. <laughs> and I, I do it for, uh, you know, trying to help people out. And I love that people love food. Yeah, man, just trying to have a really good time. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that up to a nice heat. Uh, for the chicken itself, we're going to keep the seasoning very, very simple. All right, so in this case, I'm actually, because I'm out of salt, I'm just going to just substitute a little bit of garlic salt. But I'm going to put the garlic salt on the base. Like that, right? And the reason being is because uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a, mostly a crust on the, on the top part of the breast first. Okay, and then when it comes to garlic salt, don't use a crazy amount. Right, because it is like it's salty. It's salty as hell. A shepherd's pie. Oh man. To be honest with you, no. <laughs> I love all foods. I love it a hundred percent as well. Um, if anyone knows me as a French chef, um, oh thanks, Kelly. I really appreciate you, man. Um, yeah, if anyone knows me as a French chef, I'm one of those people that is also a nose to tail uh, kind of person because, again, uh, I believe in uh, no waste as much as humanly possible. Ooh, what's good, man? Um, yeah, so if you take a look at my board right here, dedicated to one of our lovely followers, uh, she suggested that we do a roasted or a seared chicken uh, dish today. So my idea was to do a seared chicken with a beautiful maple cream, which I have nicely reduced in the back right here. Uh, with that, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of uh, pan seared Montreal spiced potatoes. Uh, I'm also gonna be doing some nice sauteed honey veg, otherwise known as a vegetable viche. And on the back right here, I have a little bit of bread pudding that I'm going to be using as a base uh, for, a, uh, for a dessert. Yo, Sandro, I hope you have a good weekend too, man. How's your week been? Yo, yeah, you have been on, man. I appreciate you for being here. How was your day? I hope everything's, uh, what do you call it? I hope everything's going really well. I hope you had a really easy week and your Friday is going to be popping off gorgeously. 
Right on, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. But again, remember when you're when you're working with anything, just make sure always take your time. There's no rush. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> we all get there at the end of the day. So um, on the top right here, I'm just gonna hit the tops of this with just a really light hit of white pepper. You can also use black pepper, doesn't matter. I just prefer white pepper because it has a little bit more, um, more like airy spice, more like um, nasal spice. Okay, so my, almost there. Also, don't just do what I just did. <laughs> Who dis? Um, how much maple syrup did I put in the cream sauce? Uh, as much as you'd like, right? I put, um, not, I put like maybe, maybe I'm going to say realistically like three tablespoons, right? And Deborah, thank you so much for the follow. And the reason I said like three tablespoons, um, is because I, that's not like more than the cream I put in, right? You want to have like, like, say like if there's a cup of cream, you want like a 10th or like one fifth of that to be maple syrup because that maple syrup uh, will, once it's reduced, will help thicken the uh, cream. Okay, and my bad, what I ma what I am I making tonight uh, on the board right now, uh, again, dedicated to one of our lovely followers for the amount of gifts that she gave on last Saturday's stream. Um, she suggested we're gonna do a seared chicken. So I, I decided to do a seared chicken with a maple cream reduction. I'm gonna be doing a Montreal spiced potatoes uh, to go on the side of that as well. A honey veg viche. Uh, and in the back here, I have some nice bread pudding uh, as a base for a dessert. Nice, so now I'm starting to get a little bit of that heat. Let's go ahead, yeah. Nice, again, I'm using like a nonstick pan. Uh, in both instances here, because the reason I wanted to sear the chicken uh, in here is primarily because I want to maintain a lot of the extra flavor profilings that's going to come off the chicken when I move it from here to here and finish that in the oven, okay? And uh, all that profiling, I'm going to add a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil, I'm going to throw my potatoes in here and give, start giving that a sear, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and give my board just a quick rinse. And again, when you have your chicken on in the pan uh, on medium, just go ahead, let it sit on the nonstick pan. You don't have to move it as much because uh, every time you move it, you're gonna be pulling off a bunch of that caramelization into the pan. You wanna maintain uh, that constant heat uh, on the, the skin. So that just kind of helps guarantee, um, it just helps guarantee that you get a good firm crust in one go, okay? So. As much as good as it is to make sure that your food isn't touching or uh, sticking um, in a nonstick pan, it is perfectly fine to just let it go ahead. Because as long as if you give it a jiggle and it does move, it will be just fine. Okay, off topic. Uh, your cast iron pan rusted. It is fixable, yeah. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how to fix it necessarily, but I do know that it is uh, fixable. If you go on YouTube, I highly recommend um, restore, uh, look up restoring cast iron pan. How do you reseason? Okay. So the best way in my opinion to reseason any, um, any pan is to, uh, bring it up. Sorry. Uh, put oil, boom, right. Uh, into your pan, add salt, rub that in, right. Mix it in until it's really, really good. Uh, and then you're going to just put it onto the heat. Right, add a little bit more oil, put it onto high heat, not the highest heat, but enough high heat that you get a good amount of smoke coming off of it. What this is gonna do is it's gonna let the, uh, what do you call it, the pan to, uh, the, it's actual like frame to like loosen up and uh, release all the excess in the pores, right? You're gonna just let that go, empty out your uh, dead oil, add in a little bit more oil, stir it around, give it a quick wipe, and just keep doing that until you're happy with the, uh, with the uh, result. Because um, it's the same thing for walks. Uh, and then you can also know it's really well seasoned when you can crack an egg on it and it definitely slides around. Um, if you need further clarification though, I do again recommend the University of YouTube. Go on there, how to reseason a pan. There's a lot of guys that 
spend their lives learning how to do that kind of uh, stuff. It's Lunar New Year today too. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Yo, Lunar New Year snacks are so fire. Leisha, thank you so much for the bracelets. I appreciate you for doing that. Yeah, there's some there's some loud, loud cars right now. <laughs> oh man, thanks for all the likes and the shares, guys. I appreciate you guys for doing that as well. Right on, right on. Okay, so... Yeah, so I'm starting to get a good amount of color uh, started on these chicken breasts. Boom, like that. Yeah, dude. And again, that white pepper scent is like, totally in the air. You can smell it, but I didn't add enough that it just like completely blackens the uh, top of the uh, chickens. Right on. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my bread pudding um, just kind of going to start trying to pull them out of the, the uh, tray. And again, these are not really well greased. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them out and then I'm just going to put them onto a plate, uh, one or two with uh, a little bit of uh, powdered sugar. I'm going to let them rest, let them come up to a nice cool temperature. Caitlin, thanks so much for the hand hearts. I appreciate you. Right on, dude. And happy Lunar New Year's to you as well, Katie. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I just don't have any pan spray. So, uh, like I said, uh, pan spray is probably the best type of, um, what do you call it, industrial lubricant you can use for any of your pans. Okay, but in that case though, I'm still going to try my best. Yeah, let's do it in one of these. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay. So. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. You can feel that it's a uh, nice. It's soft. It still has a good amount of texture to it. So just give it a squeeze inwards, right? And that should remove. Or should I should release it from the bottom more or less? Yeah. Come on. Nice. And it should open up like a flower. Gorgeous. Yeah, so that end glaze really helped it still uh, come around. And it's awesome because if you run your uh, knife around the side, using either the sharp side or the dull side, you'll still feel it uh, kind of like remove itself from the frame, which is dope. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay, so again, that's what it looks like, right? Not the prettiest thing in the world, but at the same time, it's very, still very warm, still very fragile. So, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up in the bowl so it's more like a flower. Okay. Throw these guys over here. Okay, perfect. So now I'm starting to get a crust. Hey, right on. So again, medium heat, low and slow, get this really nice, uh, good browning on it. Then I'm going to go ahead and start cooking off the base. Okay. So again, I'm just going to get the uh, same kind of color profile on that. Um, for the, where did I put my little... Yeah, this will do. So, for cinnamon sugar, um, usually you'll use granulated uh, sugar. In this case, I'm gonna use just a little bit of the powdered sugar because I find it'll get a much better dispersion of the cinnamon. Okay, like that. And uh, where did I put that cinnamon? Damn, did I use all that cinnamon? There's no way. No way. No way. 
<laughs> nah. Hold on. Unless it's like somewhere I'm just like blind. That's also a thing. Ah, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah, yeah. no way. No. <laughs> Scared me for a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit it with just a touch of that cinnamon on top. Boom. And then, fun fact, this, okay, this is the same size as this, like for those little baby bullets. So I'm gonna instead use uh, the lid to sprinkle on the uh, thing. This is a weird discovery that I made like uh, a couple years ago. But it's awesome because it allows you to just uh, powder on any of your powdered sugar stuff. Boom, just like that, really roughly. Boom. Now I'll put this back up here where I can find it for once. <laughs> I do love some good fucking cinnamon, Shannon. All right. Damn. Kays, thank you so much for the cloud bread and the popcorn. And Sunflower, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you guys. And as usual, welcome to the live. I appreciate you all for being here. Um, if you guys get a uh, quick chance, go ahead, please hit that like button for me and share this live. Again, that kind of stuff helps me in the algorithm, keeps me in front of people like yourself, people who love food, who love talking about food, um, you know what I mean? Who love talking about recipes, interacting, and asking chefs uh, daily questions, you know what I'm saying? Who dis? Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you. Okay, perfect. So on the base again, we're starting to get that good caramelization, right? So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to throw that into my sheet pan, throw that in the oven. I'm gonna let that roast, okay? So on the back burner right here, I got my little bit of, what do you call it, uh, bread pudding. Nice, I'm just gonna let that sit, do its thing. On the back here, I got a little bit of that double reduced cream. It's now reduced, so I'm gonna just go ahead and hit it with just a small one or two tablespoons of cream just to help loosen it up. I think she might have messed up. Say again? Leisha thinks she might have messed up. Leisha, what happened? What happened, what happened here? I added a sugar, nutmeg, and cinnamon crust on top of the bread pudding. Don't worry about that. The nutmeg might be a little bit overpowering, but remember, you can still cover that up with more sugar. Yeah, because again, if it's overpowering it, more get another mixing bowl, more sugar, more cinnamon, mix, boom, right on top, no harm, no foul. If you can, also hit it with like some maple syrup or like some like butter pancake syrup. That'll cover up that uh, hit of uh, nutmeg as well. But if you give it a taste, see what it is. Brings light into any room. Hey, positivity. I appreciate you. Absolutely. We try to keep laughing and keeping the vibes up. Oh, it was cinnamon. Hey, she's in. She wins. Right on, dude. Yeah, dude. I got a sneaky nutmeg. Yeah, nutmeg is like such a gnarly flavor for like what it is. Okay, so... In this pan, I had uh, my chicken. I have that in the oven right now, but I'm gonna maintain all that, um, what do you call it, all the fond on the bottom of the pan. Just like that. I'm just gonna turn up, what do you call it, my air vents, just so it doesn't uh, get too crazy in here. Um, yes, you can lightly uh, warm up your cream cheese uh, as long as you do it in small uh, increments. Like do it in like 15, 20 second increments, turn it, you know, turn it in the microwave, turn it over on itself if it's a block, all that stuff. Sister June, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome so much to the live. I appreciate you for being here. Yeah, uh, and again, if you can do your uh, microwave as well on like a lower power setting, I guess. Uh, and then doing it in stages will also help. <laughs> Cinnamon buns are fire, though. Ain't nobody needs to see our jar pop. 
Miami, Melly, hey, thanks so much for the follow as well. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Okay, so I'm just going, I have my cooled off potatoes. They're now just in the pan. I'm just trying to agitate them uh, just so they just kind of guarantee that they won't stick. Uh, and then I'm going to be adding in, um, They since they're cool, they will be taking on a little bit of oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be adding in just a touch more oil here and there, just to make sure that it doesn't stick uh, to the base. Because the thin, again, the thing with these potatoes is the reason that they're so good for um, things like French fries and things like hash brown is because they already have quite a bit of starch in them. Meaning that when you do crisp out the outsides, the outsides will become quite crispy, quite crunchy. Right? But that is at the expense of having um, a bunch of starch. That starch means that if you uh, don't wash them, they will stick to the bottom of your pans. Montreal potatoes is potatoes that I'm just now uh, searing off, getting a good crunch on it, and it will have Montreal steak spice uh, on top of it with just a hit of butter. Yeah, actually, yo, Bridget, that's also a really good method. Hell yeah. Yeah, put it in warm water, not hot water, but leave it in the package. That will do the thing as well. Yeah, and uh, Montreal Steak Spice is a classic. It's something that uh, I've been personally, because again, I worked with a lot of guys that uh, came out of the, the Montreal food scene. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, they all use... Uh, they all use Montreal steak spice, so it's just something that's ingrained into my person at this point. Okay, so now you're getting a good amount of crust developing there. Good. Good. So I'm just going to, at this point, I'm going to just boost the heat just to a slight, uh, and then I'm going to just get a small bowl so I can put uh, my potatoes into there, and then I can get onto my veg, and we are on the home stretch for dinner and dessert. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is so good. Yo, hey, even Montreal Steak Spice on like eggs, dude, is amazing. Yeah, the, uh, the, the steak spice as well, the Montreal steak is, uh, sorry, Montreal chicken steak is amazing spices as well. I mean, you can still snack on Doritos. Like, still, you're looking at like maybe ten more minutes. Yeah, Shan's out here just snacking on ranch Doritos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It'll be worth the wait, honey. It's true. Nice. It was you. <laughs> I know it was, baby. Yeah, that's okay, though. Takis? What kind of Takis? I love Takis. Ooh, that's <laughs> so good. Yeah, Takis is the best if you get, like, even if you have, like, Takis and, like, Shamoy, like that Mexican hot sauce stuff. Um, one of the best things you can also do with Takis is if you ever get a chance, make up, uh, what do you call it, uh, do Takis, cut off the side, all right, and then make um, like taco beef, like throw that in there, then cover it with liquid cheese, some green onions, some sour cream, uh, a little bit of extra hot sauce, and like eat it like, a, like wet nachos in a bag. So nuts. Do I make, I don't make Mexican food all that often. If anything, I make uh, more Tex-Mex. Because I love me a good taco night. Uh, I would say that if I was to say that my food was Mexican, or, or Mexican in any way, it was it would be more like Taco Bell adjacent. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's like pothead Mexican. Any good pork chop recipes? Absolutely. Actually, technically, this recipe. <laughs> like the, this... Um, what do you call it? This sauce is also amazing on pork, right? Um, but the best thing you can do with pork... <laughs> Cat and Joe, hey, thanks so much for the follow. Um, but to be honest with you, if you were to do this like double reduced cream uh, for pork, what I would also add is a small hit of tarragon. Like really finely chopped fresh tarragon, boom. And uh, yeah, then you would also um, do the pork chop on a grill, like you would marinate it. 
you would season it, uh, salt, pepper, all that good stuff. Um, put a little bit of Cajun spice on it. Then you would put it onto your like barbecue or something or in a pan and you're gonna hard sear it, right? And then finish it in the oven, right? Once you pull it, you're gonna debone it off the thing. If there is no bone, fine, you're good. Just boom, boom, onto a plate on top of like something that'll soak up the rest of it. So potatoes, a piece of garlic bread, put this sauce on top, Wow, perfect. Um, you can also, also, if you were to like reduce this sauce, you would also add in like a, a hit of Bailey's or a hit of brandy. You know what I'm saying? And that's gonna re-amplify that woody kind of um, sweet flavor overall uh, to go with that uh, maple syrup. And uh, when you put it over top of your pork, it's gonna be amazing. Megan, thanks so much for the follow. And Cree Style, thank you so much for the follow as well. I appreciate you guys for being here. Okay, so now the potatoes are starting to get this really great crisp. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, so they're crispy. Uh, lightly on the outside as well as they have this kick-ass soft interior Okay, I'm just gonna leave these in a bowl just like that and we're gonna go ahead and move on to Our veg so in this I'm actually just gonna turn it up uh, quite high So I'm gonna set it to about maybe six and a half almost seven Add in a little bit of the oil I'm gonna add in my red onions and my garlic right now Okay, and then that, with that, I'm gonna follow with my broccoli. Okay, and as well, I'm gonna hit this guy with a, maybe about two tablespoons worth of butter. So like a good nub of salted butter. Boom. <laughs> Hope you got your big your bingo card out. Uh, the tongs. Okay, so um, to be honest with you, I bought like a bunch of these from, uh, there's a place, uh, there's like a restaurant store in Pike's Place in Seattle. Um, but if you go online, go to eBay, go to Amazon, they're what's known as forcep tongs or um, skinny tongs or anything like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, because you'll usually see them, they'll have like a rubber tip, right, that you can then just pull off. Right. Um, I love again. Anybody that follows this live, anybody that knows me, knows I can't live without these. Uh, for the temperature of the chicken in the oven, so um, uh, you're gonna cook your uh, chicken obviously to a 160, 165, uh, but the oven is now sitting at about 400, and that's what's gonna get me the best kind of uh, overall cook, as well as gonna give me the base coat or uh, base char that I'm looking for in the pan. Yeah. And at 400, it's, it's, it's the right amount. So you're gonna go for roughly about another 10 minutes or so. Or sorry, when it goes in, you're just going to put it in, I'd say, depending on the size of the chicken. The, the pieces of chicken that I have are about maybe eight to 10 ounces of breast. So those will require maybe like a 12 to 15 minute cook time. If you butterfly them, like boom, right? They'll require maybe about eight to 10 minutes. If you, it depends on how long you seared them in the pan as well. But of course, if you uh, need to check, pull one out, um, pull one out, and then on the thickest part. So if this was a chicken breast, where is it? Yeah. So if this was a chicken breast, obviously there's one part that's thinner that comes down to an angle, and there's a thicker part. Take a knife and then just give it a slice right across, and you can open it up to see the thickest part and see if it's completely cooked. <laughs> yeah, Bridget, absolutely, dude. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, Take a look and see if any of your uh, kitchen supply stores, like um, go to Chinatown. I know for a fact they got kitchen supply stores down there as well. Um, yeah, just do uh, do a tour around, see what they got. What's awesome about doing a tour around for like kitchen supply stuff is that you always inherently walk away with like more stuff than you really need. <laughs> uh, but if you do go to a kitchen supply place, also remember, grab your one liters, right? It's like 25, 30 bucks for like 30, 40 of them. Uh, but you do got to buy your lids. <laughs> you guys have to make a big no card. Okay, good. So now I'm taking on a good amount of color on my red onions, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, the broccoli. Let's get those just kind of softening right now. Since they are small enough that in approximately six minutes, these will be pretty much good to go. So in this moment, I'm gonna add in just another hit of butter. Okay. 
Boom. Let that do its thing. Like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to pull out some honey. And let that do its thing for a quick sear. Uh, yes, I am using salted butter. Yes, ma'am. Um, I would, I would, I would use like non-salted butter if you really wanted to, but at the same time, eh, it's we're good. You know what I'm saying? Schmear, chop with no looking. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so I'm gonna give my chicken just a quick check. Yeah, looks like we're almost there. Right, again, you guys can see that uh, by having uh, your chicken facing up, right, you're getting that really gorgeous color, but on the base, you're getting this really nice deep uh, roast, which I'm pretty sure, I'm just gonna just give this a quick check. Yep, so I'd say two more minutes in the oven just to kind of help solidify the chicken itself. And then that is good to go. Right, give this a quick toss. Nice. So now we're getting to the point where like the uh, broccoli um, tips are really becoming nice and soft. And the, uh, what do you call it? The stems are becoming really nice and uh, cooked through, but they still are maintaining a good amount of crunch. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead with just a hits of the uh, little bit of honey. Uh, the temperature I have uh, the chicken on is at 400 degrees. Okay, so boom, like such, give that a quick toss. And then to give it just that little, um, that little bit of umph, where did I put it? No, I'm gonna hit it with some of that garlic powder as well. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Right, a little bit of a garlic salt on there, just because again, I don't have any salt on me. Boom. What temp is the, yeah, yeah, temp of the oven is 400, 100%. All right, give that a quick toss. Boom. All right, and that's going to now allow the uh, onions to become really nice, clarified and sweet. Because again, with red onions, what you're looking for is something like that, right? You can almost, you can't really see through it, but you can see that like the light comes through, it's gorgeous, it's soft, still has a good amount of uh, springiness to it, but it's not crunchy, right? This will actually break down really well. Okay, I got the oven turned off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, for the uh, cream sauce, Okay, so for the cream sauce, Jamie, what I did put was uh, red onions primarily because I couldn't find any shallots. Uh, shallots or red onions are more of a major component in the cream sauce, specifically because they have like a much uh, more more rich flavor than um, like the spiciness of like a yellow or a white onion, as well as the green onion helps then accentuate the overall balance between the red onion and the cream. You have shallots, use shallots, 100%. Right, give them a good fine dice, put them in, again, put them in slow uh, with your butter, let that come up, and you don't wanna catch color on the shallots, you just wanna extract some of that water that comes out of the uh, shallots themselves, uh, all that good stuff, and then you're gonna help uh, deglaze that with, um, what do you call it, with your uh, cream, right? Bring that up to a slight uh, simmer, you're gonna bring that down to like a low simmer, add your maple syrup, give that a complete stir so nothing burns to the bottom, and then you're just gonna let that simmer away till it reduces down to a gorgeous, gorgeous silky sauce, okay? So, on the pan right here, I have my chickens ready to go. So now, we are in the final stretch, guys. We're gonna do the plating. Okay? So with the sauce, I always try to get the uh, sauce more to a room temperature than to a hot. 
uh, strictly because when you do um, any type of cream sauce, I prefer, especially when it's going to be thickened. Um, yeah, check that out. Like it's just as gorgeous, really nice, rich. It covers the back of a spoon really well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start this as my base, right? Say again. Hey, right on, Bridget. I believe in you. You know what I'm saying? It's all about making food that you love and you want to do time and time again. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people that hate cooking, right? Some find it daunting, some just don't want to do it. But I'll be real, if you make a food or you make a couple dishes that you know you love, you love making every single time, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like those are the dishes that you'll keep coming back to. Okay, so on the plate, I got a little bit of this gorgeous uh, sauce, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start with um, a good hit of these potatoes. Just nice, easy on the plate, like that. Okay, just like that. Then I'm gonna follow with a bit of this uh, broccoli and onion. that perfect okay so that can now just hold on the side for a second right where it can stay warm I'm gonna take the gorgeous chicken breast um, as well, just like steak, guys, if you're going to deal with chicken breast or anything like that, allow your chicken breast time to uh, rest. Operative Sierra, thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, allow your meat to always at least maybe four or five minutes to rest just so that it doesn't have, um, what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, it's just so that it reconstitutes all that juice because you'll notice in the pan, it uh, has like a light amount of that juice, uh, what do you call it, in it which is just fine. So I'm gonna actually take some of that juice, throw the rest into the cream sauce because I'm gonna finish the chicken with that, okay? So when I do uh, chicken, what I really love doing is that I never leave it um, necessarily whole on the plate, okay? So what you wanna do is, uh, depending on how tender it is, which is at this point quite tender, So I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a quick cut into medallions. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take the nice chicken breast here. Okay. Lay that on. Okay, as is. All right, just like that. And then you saw that I took some of that chicken juice, right? Abdul, <laughs> you'll have dinner again. <laughs> All right, so. Work that into the thing. Then I'm gonna go ahead and finish that chicken with that sauce. All right, nice and easy, nothing too crazy. Okay, just like that. And then green onions to garnish. Okay, boom. So there we have Montreal potatoes. Uh, vegetable vichy with a bit of roasted um, seared chicken with maple cream. Nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated, okay? And again, uh, just if you guys want a closer look at this dish, I will always, as usual, be posting uh, video and uh, pictures of the final dishes 
um, at the end of every one of my lives on my TikTok page. So if you guys want to follow up of what the uh, plates always look like, stuff like that, go ahead. Don't forget to follow my page and I'd appreciate it a lot if you guys did. Case, thanks so much for the fire. I appreciate it. And again, this is dedicated to one of our lovely followers. She was the top gifter on last Saturday's uh, live. And uh, Jamie, absolutely. So Jamie SS80 is the one that suggested this item for today's live. I appreciate you greatly for doing it. Uh, again, I spent a couple days just kind of thinking about a really great dish uh, to come up with, something that you can easily do at home. Uh, it, everyone, it's really accessible. Again, if you guys want to make this at home, you do have any questions, hit me up in the DMs after this live. Uh, and I'm here for any help that you guys need. Okay. And Joanne McBrien, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you guys. And thanks for the... Uh, roses you guys as well i appreciate all that too so um yeah, i'll be right back i'm going to uh, give this to shannon she's been waiting and i will be one second lasagna yeah. lasagna i will probably end up doing a nice uh I will probably end up doing a nice lasagna probably on the on a Tuesday or a Thursday. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, remember, bread pudding isn't supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be like dank. It's supposed to just hit the spot, right? Mildly warm. You can put cream on it. Speaking of that, I got my cinnamon and sugar uh, with vanilla, right? Bread pudding, right? I stacked up two into a bowl just like that so now it's actually cooled down it does have a hit of um, warmth to it yep I'll get you a plate right away honey so just to finish off this uh, bread pudding what I love to do is I love to add say again uh, actually, put in green onions after you hit it with cream. Right? So what I like to do is I'm just going to hit this with just a, just a quick base of whipped cream on top, like that. Okay? And because it's, a, it's really, it's like more of a soft factor with a creaminess factor, I will always add in just a hit of crunch, which is some honey roasted peanuts on top and there we go right a gorgeous light bread pudding right vanilla flavorings a little bit of rum extract um, some honey roasted peanuts and some nice easy cream to go on top of that definitely Bridget absolutely I will keep you guys as usual informed on my page uh, of when uh, a cook with me episode will come up and I will be getting you guys that recipe usually um, In my head. I can see you guys uh... Uh, You have nut allergies yo instead use uh... Instead use these I don't think these have nuts in them Never mind Try to find like a like a like a hard caramel, like use like uh, crushed up. Uh, whoops, use like crushed up um, Werther's caramels. Use um, again any any type of crunchy caramelly or like sweet sugary kind of thing that you can break up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So again, yeah, for the uh, cook with me episode, I'm going to try my best to uh, create like a couple dishes that uh, we all can choose on on maybe on a Tuesday or a Thursday. I'll do a vote maybe. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'll try to make sure that for the Saturday, you guys are set up for um, instructions for the recipe for the prep. And we will just have a really easy, casual uh, cooking day. All right. So with that said, I think I'm going to cut it at this at this time so thank you again jamie ss80 thank you so much again for the suggestion on tonight's dinner i appreciate you guys i love you guys a lot and i will see you guys on the tuesday live stream so just a quick reminder as well i stream tuesdays thursdays saturdays 5 p.m uh mountain time 
as well. Uh, at the end of this live stream, I'm gonna be taking pictures and video of my final dishes. Uh, so if you guys want a closer look, or you have any questions, comments, recipe ideas, anything like that going forward, go ahead, hit me in the DMs on my page, and I will see you guys all on Tuesday. Have a great uh, rest of your evenings.